All right, folks, in this lesson, what we're now going to move on to is what I call market dynamics. Now, what we have here is a basic market graph for a product, okay? Now, we do not care what the product is, but what we're, we, can, we can pretend or imagine all different kinds of products. It can be a good, what we call a, a physical good. It, for example, it can be a, um, a, an, a phone, okay, a mobile phone. It can also be a car, you know, the supply of cars and the demand for cars. It can be food at a restaurant. This could be the supply of Chick-fil-A and the demand for Chick-fil-A. It can also be a service. For example, it could be um, service for your phone, phone service, like for Verizon or AT&T, okay? It's the supply of phone service and the demand for phone service. So it doesn't really matter what the product is. Most products, almost all products, follow this basic format of a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve. Now I want you to note that what I have drawn here is not as specific as what we saw in the previous lesson where I had a grid where you could actually count out the quantity and count out the price. And what I want you to know is where we're moving now is where we're going to discuss these concepts more abstractly. So we're going to do fewer specifics and, and, and be a lot more general and more abstract. We no longer really care about what the specific price is, equilibrium price is or what the specific equilibrium quantity is. What we're really concerned with is when there's a change in the market, and there will be changes in the market. In fact, the word dynamic implies the idea that something is changing, okay? That when there is a change in the market, we don't care what the new equilibrium price is, and there will be a new equilibrium price, and we don't care what the new equilibrium quantity is, well, the only thing we really care is whether the equilibrium price goes up or down, or whether the equilibrium quantity goes up or down. We don't care what the actual value is. In this principles of macroeconomics class, we are just simply learning the basics of supply and demand and the dynamics of what happens to demand and supply and what happens to equilibrium price an equilibrium quantity, okay? So, we're gonna talk about change. We're gonna talk, what is change? All right, think about a number. Let's, let's just think about any number, like the number seven, okay? Let's just consider the number seven, right? Uh, and let's consider that it is on a number line, and we can make it a horizontal number line, or we can make it a vertical number line if we want to, We'll put the number seven on there. So I don't know if you're a vertical number line person or a horizontal number line person. Now, generally speaking, to the right, on a horizontal number line, to the right, all the numbers are larger, and to the left, all the numbers are smaller. That's just the way that we do things in our culture, okay? On a vertical number line, numbers that are larger are up, and all the numbers that are smaller are down, right? Okay, so if we are changing. Let, let's say, let's attach the number seven to something. Let's say seven is the number of dollars in your pocket. Let's say that you have seven dollars in your pocket. If that were to change to where you don't have seven dollars in your pocket anymore, you have a different amount of money in your pocket, there are only two possible changes that can happen to that number seven. The number seven can either increase by becoming a larger number, like eight, or the number can decrease by becoming a smaller number, like six. So the number seven can only change whatever it's representing, like price or quantity. The, there's only two ways that it can change. It can either increase 
by becoming a larger number or it can decrease by becoming a smaller number. Now, there is a third option and that's it could stay the same. It could just not change at all. So any number like price or quantity only has three possible states. It's either going to stay the same or it's going to increase or it's going to decrease. And we can say the same thing if it's on a vertical number line. That if the number 7 were to become larger, like the number 8, that we would call an increase. And I represent that by using an upward arrow. But if the number 7 were to change and go down to the number 6, we would call that a decrease. And we would use a downward arrow. And so when I'm explaining things in economics, especially when I'm talking about market dynamics, I often use up arrows to represent the word increase, and I often use down arrows to represent the word decrease. Okay? And so what we're going to do here is we're going to try, there's, there's basically, we have four things represented on this graph. I'm going to point to them. Four things. We have supply, we have demand, we have price, and we have quantity. And all four of these things are being represented by something numeric, something with numbers. Price is an absolute number, like $27. Quantity is an absolute number, like 114 units. But supply and demand, they're diagonal lines, and so they're represented by something more complicated, like a function. Okay, But they still have numbers in there, and the numbers that are a part of that function can change. So ultimately, in market dynamics, we're going to be concerned with four kinds of changes. We're going to be concerned with changes in demand. Changes in supply. Changes in equilibrium price. And changes in equilibrium quantity. Now when I refer to a change in demand, Demand can only change in one of two ways. It can either increase or decrease. So if I'm referring to an increase in demand, I'm going to do an upward arrow with a D. If I'm referring to a decrease in demand, I'm going to do a downward arrow with a D. And so this right here, that's an increase. And a downward arrow, that is a decrease. Now, for changes in supply, I will use an upward arrow with an S to represent an increase in supply. And I will use a downward arrow with an S to represent a decrease in supply. Similarly, for changes in equilibrium price, I will use an upward arrow with a P sub E to represent an increase in equilibrium price, and I'll use a downward arrow with a P sub E to represent a decrease in equilibrium price. And then for equilibrium quantity, I will use, again, an upward arrow to represent. So when I say upward arrow equilibrium uh, quantity, I mean that equilibrium quantity is becoming larger. So if equilibrium quantity was 100 and now it's 120, that was an increase in equilibrium quantity. And then for a decrease in equilibrium quantity, I will use a downward arrow with a Q sub E. Now, on the graph, on the market graph, it's important to understand that equilibrium quantity is, represent, is represented on the horizontal axis, right? So, when there is a, an increase in equilibrium quantity, that means that instead of being here, the little where, where it is on the horizontal axis is going to move to the right. That is an increase. So this would be an increase in equilibrium quantity. 
And if this moves this direction to where it's over here, if equilibrium quantity, so let's say that this point, this intersection, this equilibrium point, what if it was over here instead? If it was over here instead, then we would come down here, and this is where equilibrium quantity would be, and that would be, a, it, it's moving to the left. And a leftward movement of equilibrium quantity, we would say, is a decrease or a downward arrow in equilibrium quantity. So when this, when equilibrium, when the equal, equilibrium point moves this direction in the graph, that would be an increase in equilibrium quantity. When it moves this direction, that would be a decrease in equilibrium quantity. Same thing with equilibrium price, except that it's vertical. So if equilibrium price, if this equilibrium point is now up here, that's an increase, and we would say up arrow P sub E, increase in equilibrium price. And if the equilibrium point wound up being down here somewhere or over here, so anywhere below this, anywhere down here, we would have a decrease equilibrium price would go down, and we would say down arrow P sub E, that's a decrease in equilibrium price, okay? So what we said in a previous lesson is this, is that the supply and demand curve, they can shift. And, and when the supply or the demand curve shift on the market graph, they only go left and right. They never go up and down. Now, that should already be in your notes, okay? And what we said is that a left shift, this direction, is that would be a decrease. So a decrease in demand or a decrease in supply, that would be represented on the graph by a left shift, okay? A left shift shift of the entire curve, meaning that the whole curve would move from here over to here, or this whole curve would move from here over to here, okay? But an increase in demand or an increase in supply are represented by a right shift. And in that sense, the whole curve would move to the right, or this whole curve would move to the right, okay? Right shift is considered to be an increase in supply or an increase in demand, okay? Do you remember uh, at the very beginning of the class, we talked about ceteris paribus, the ceteris paribus assumption? And what we said was this, is that this ceteris paribus is where we um, hold everything unchanged except for one thing. We're only going to change one thing at a time and then see how that changes other things. What are the effects of making just a single change? And so here's what I want to show you. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that, that these changes down here, changes in equilibrium price and changes in equilibrium quantity, those are results those aren't things that we're going to change, okay? Those are the results of change. They are not, we're not making those things happen. That's what's happening as a result of something changing. But change in demand and change in supply, those are the things that we're going to change, okay? We will change these, okay? So we're going to uh, we are going to cause them to change. So we're going to, this is the cause, and this down here is the effect. So we have the cause and the effect. These are the results of the change. So here's the kinds of questions I'm going to ask. I'm going to say, when there is an increase in demand, what then will happen to equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity? What will be the resulting change in equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity when there is an increase in demand. And so what we're now going to do is one thing at a time. We're going to look at these four changes. There's four possible changes because there's two things that we're changing. We're changing demand and we're changing supply. And when we change them, they can only either increase or decrease. So two things can change in two ways. So that's four possible changes in 
any market. And we're going to look one at a time at all four of those changes and how each one of those four changes is going to affect the results of equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. And when each one of when supply or demand change in a market, we call that a dynamic market. The market is dynamic. The supply curve is moving, fluctuating. The demand curve is moving, it is fluctuating. And when the supply curve fluctuates, and when the demand curve fluctuates, it results in fluctuations in price and quantity. And that's what we're gonna see right now. All right, so what I've done here is um, I've set up in two different ways. Over here, we're gonna create a chart. And over here, we're going to look at the graphs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work from here, take our information from the graph, and we're gonna put it over here in the chart so that you can summarize the information about what happens when there is an increase or a decrease in demand or supply, okay? And since there's four possible changes, what I thought that we could do is we could, uh, we would have a separate graph for each one of the changes. So let's go ahead and start up here. Um, now note that all four of these graphs are, are the starting position of the market. Let's say that we have a market that, it, that hasn't changed in just a little while, that the supply and the demand curve are, are just sort of sitting there. De uh, demanders, this is how they feel. Suppliers, this is their cost structure. And because of the cost structure of the suppliers and the attitudes of the demanders, uh, the, this is the equilibrium price at the intersection, and this is the equilibrium quantity from the intersection, and it's the same in all four of these cases. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a different change in each one of these. In this uh, graph, we're going to do an increase in demand. In this graph, we're going to do an increase in supply. In this graph, we're going to do a decrease in demand, and in this graph, we're going to do a decrease in supply. Now, in, in the next lesson, I'm going to explain to you why these things change. Why does the demand curve change? Why does the supply curve change? But for now, I don't want, I don't want to talk about that. Let's just assume that something is happening that is causing the demand curve or the supply curve to change. Okay. Now, when the ch curve uh, or when demand changes, the way it's going to look is as a shift in the curve. And we talked about that in a previous lesson. And what we said just a little while ago is that when there is an increase in demand, demand increasing, an increase means a rightward movement. An increase is going to the right. Because remember we said that these curves, they don't go up and down, they go left and right, okay? So an increase mathematically means to the right. All the larger numbers are to the right and all the smaller numbers are to the left. So an increase in demand, which I'm gonna represent as an upward arrow with a, an upward arrow with a D. So an increase in demand, and then what I often do is I put these sideways arrows. My sideways arrows basically means leads to, okay, so or causes. So an increase in demand is going to cause like a domino effect, a chain reaction. An increase in demand causes a rightward shift of the demand curve. So to the right, I'm going to put a couple rightward arrows. There's a right arrow. There's another right arrow pointing to the right, indicating an increase, and this curve is going to sort of move along those arrows and move over to the right. And so now we're going to have a new demand curve. The demand curve is shifting over to the right, and I'm going to represent that by the letter D with a little apostrophe on it, and we call that D prime. And so if there is an increase in demand, that's gonna be represented on a market graph as a rightward shift of the demand curve over to D prime. And now look what happened. Let's ignore this intersection here. This intersection is going away. This is no longer the equilibrium. 
The new equilibrium is where the, the old supply curve, which didn't move, ceteris paribus, we're only moving one thing at a time. The new demand curve is over here, and look, this point right here, that's the new intersection of supply and demand. This one is gone. Market forces are now going to get involved. See, now the price is too low. And what's going to happen here, if we, go, if we then take this equilibrium point and go over here to the left, that's going to be our new equilibrium. Remember, market forces say if the price is too low here, if demand has increased, that's going to put upward force on the price. And when the price goes up, so we're going to have PE prime, that's the new equilibrium, and we can go vertically down here to the quantity axis, and that is our new equilibrium quantity. We'll put QE Q, Q, e prime. And look what happened to equilibrium quantity. Is it, it also increased. And here's what I'm trying to show you. Here is the result. Is that when demand increases, that results in a right shift. A right D demand curve shift. Okay, so a rightward shift of the demand curve. And then it's going to result in two things. First of all, it's going to result in an increase in equilibrium price. So increase in P sub E, which we could represent as up arrow, an up arrow, P sub E. Right? It's also going to result in an increase in equilibrium quantity. So increase in Q sub E. And in parentheses, we'll say that that's an up arrow with a Q sub E. So here's what I'm saying, is that when there's an increase in demand in any market, there will subsequently be an increase in equilibrium price and an increase in equilibrium quantity. Okay. So let's think about what does this mean? Let's get away from the math and the, and the graphs. And let's think about this. Let's say that there's a particular pair of shoes that becomes more popular. I brought this up previously. Let's say that there was an athlete that won a big event at the Olympics. And now all of a sudden, everybody wants the same shoes that that athlete was wearing. Well, the demand for that shoe is going to increase more people are going to be more willing and more able to buy those shoes. Mostly willing. They'll be more willing to buy the shoes. When those people are more willing to buy those shoes, you know what's going to happen to that shoe? The price is going to go up, but people are still going to buy more of it. Even though the price goes up, people are going to buy more. Why are they buying more even though the price went up? You're going to say, Professor Ryan, you said that when the price goes up, people are going to buy less. Yes, that's ceteris paribus. That's with no change in demand. But now something has caused people to want that product more. They are more willing than they used to be, so their demand changed. When the demand changes in an increased direction, the net result, according to this graph, is that the price will go up and there will be more produced and more sold. Doesn't that make sense? When something's more popular, when something becomes more popular, they're willing to, it always winds up going up in price and people wind up buying more and more of it. That's weird. Yes, it's because the demand curve shifted to the right. Okay? All right, that's an increase in demand. Well, now let's do a decrease in demand. What would happen if demand decreased? What if people wanted less of something? They were less willing or less able to buy it. Let's say that they were less able to. Let's say people had less money. Something happens and people just have less money than they used to have, okay? Just maybe for a little, a little while. All of a sudden, people can't buy all the same things they were buying before, okay? Let's say that they were able to buy, um, I don't know, Let's think of something good. They were able to go out to eat a lot, but now that they have less money, they can't go out to eat a lot. Okay, so let's say that this is the supply and the demand for eating out at restaurants. Okay, well, 
people are going to eat out at restaurants less. There's going to be a decrease in demand. Well, a decrease, remember we said it only either moves right or left. Decrease for something to become smaller is indicated by a leftward movement. And so a decrease in demand, so we'll put downward arrow with a D, is going to lead to a left demand curve shift. So a leftward shift of the demand curve and a leftward shift. So we're going to put some left arrows in here. Go ahead and put a left arrow, a left arrow. So now that demand curve is going to move over to the left. So I'm going to draw a demand curve over to the left. That's our new demand curve, which we're going to call D prime. That's our new demand curve. And now look at the new intersection point. Here's the equilibrium point. The equilibrium point used to be up here, but now the equilibrium point is down here. And if we draw a little dashed line over here, and we draw a little dashed line down here to the quantity, we can see that the new equilibrium price, which we'll call equal, uh, PE prime and QE prime, that is the new equilibrium price and the new equilibrium quantity. And you can see here now that there is a, that's indicating what happened to the price. The price went from up here down to here. And the quantity went from here over to here, backwards to the left. So that's a decrease in equilibrium quantity and a decrease in equilibrium price. So here's what we're going to say. Look, when there's a decrease in demand, not only will there be a leftward shift of the demand curve, but we will ultimately, the result will be that there will be a decrease in equilibrium price, which we'll put as a downward arrow with a P sub E. There will also be a decrease in equilibrium quantity. So we'll put downward arrow with a Q sub E. Now, if you're catching on to this, then these last two supply, they're going to be a piece of cake. What you have to be good at doing is you have to be good at producing one of these starting graphs and then deciding for yourself, what's moving? Is the demand curve moving or is the supply curve moving? And so now we're going to work on an increase in supply. So let's say supply goes up. So we're going to say up arrow with an S. So an increase in supply. Well, here's the supply curve. Increase, when something increases on a, on a graph, that means it moves to the right. And so we're going to draw some right arrows. I'll draw a right arrow there and a right arrow there. So we're going to say an increase in supply results in a right shift of the S curve. Right supply curve shift over to the right. So we're going to draw a new supply curve over to the right. It's going to look like this. We'll put S prime for the new supply curve. Now, here's what you're going to, this could mix you up, so be careful with this. Some people, the way they look at this new curve is they look at it as being below the original supply curve. So they think a decrease in supply, but you can't think up and down. You have to think right and left. Yes, it looks like this curve is below this curve, but that's not what happened. What happened is the curve increased. It moved over to the right. So now this, is an, this represents what you're looking at right here. It represents an increase in supply, and our new intersection point, our new equilibrium point, is right there. And now, if we draw over to the price axis, what do we see? What just happened to equilibrium price? It went down. So we'll have PE prime. That's a decrease in equilibrium price. If we go over here to the, the intersection and go down to the quantity axis, what happened to equilibrium quantity? Well, equilibrium quantity increased QE prime. And so the net result is when there is an increase in supply in a market, the result on price and quantity will be there will be a decrease in equilibrium price and an increase in equilibrium quantity because of the market forces, because the suppliers and demanders are always trying to get back to equilibrium. They're agreeing to get back to equilibrium. So when this supply curve shifts, that equilibrium point is going to move with the shift, ultimately resulting in a decrease in equilibrium price and an increase in equilibrium quantity. 
So we're going to write that down. An increase in supply is going to result in a decrease in equilibrium price. So we're going to put a down arrow with a PE, but an increase in equilibrium quantity. So that's an up arrow with a Q sub E. Well, does that make sense? Well, let's think about this. If suppliers, if a seller is able to produce and sell more, there's a specific reason that that happens. All of a sudden, let's say after something happens out there in the world, now they're like, hey, we can make more stuff. When they can make more stuff, what that means is their quantity will go up and because they can make more stuff, they can actually charge a lower price. Well, let's explain why they can charge a lower price in a later lesson. But understand that when supply increase, the price will go down in, the, in that particular market while the quantity goes up. And doesn't that sound awesome? Lower price, more stuff. Yes, this has happened with lots of things in the world. There are lots of things where, let's say 30 years ago, we couldn't get as much of it and it was super expensive. For example, cell phones. It used to be, gosh, to have a cell phone, like only maybe one in every 10 or 20,000 people probably had a cell phone. They, had, they came in, you had to carry around a battery, a giant battery in a bag, and the phone had a wire that attached to the battery, and they were just really heavy and clunky. They were way more expensive than what we currently pay for our cell phone service. And our phones can do more nowadays than those phones used to be able to do a long time ago. They were extremely expensive, high in price, low in quantity. But because the productivity, because the supply of mobile phones has increased, now everybody has one. Some people have two, three, or four of them, right? Because the supply of mobile phones has increased, suppliers have been able to make more. Why? Because of technology. We've been able to de develop technology that ultimately brings down the price so that more people can buy them and increases the quantity so that more people can have them and have more than one of them, okay? All right, last one, decrease in supply. A decrease in supply, that's gonna be a downward arrow with an S, that's gonna be, a decrease means left, right? So because the number's getting smaller. Smaller numbers are to the left, so that's a left shift of the supply curve. So we're gonna say left supply curve Shift, okay, let's go ahead and draw that in here. Supply curve shifts to the left, shifts to the left arrows, right? So our new supply curve is over here to the left. So we're gonna put S prime, and now our new intersection point, our new equilibrium point is right here, intersects. We're gonna draw over to the price axis this way. What happened to the price? Well, it was here, now it's up here, so we have an increase in equilibrium price. It's PE prime. And on quantity, let's draw a dashed line down to the quantity axis. Oh, look at that. Quantity has decreased. QE prime. And here's what I'm saying, is that in a market, when supply in that market decreases, they're producing less of it. They are less able or less willing to produce. And when they are less able and less willing to produce in that market, the supply curve shifts to the left, the price tends to go up, and the quantity produced and bought tends to go down. So a decrease in supply is going to result in an increase in equilibrium price. That's P sub E. It's going to increase. I forgot to put the up arrow and it's going to result in a decrease in equilibrium quantity. That's a, de that's a down arrow with a QE. Okay? And that's it. These are the four possible changes that could happen in any product market. And this summarizes the result in each one of those four changes of what ultimately will happen to equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. And you don't have to memorize this chart. All you have to do is know how to use this graph. Start off with a supply and demand curve, know where the intersection is, 
move one of the four curves either right or left and then see where the, where the new intersection point is and what that does to equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. And now you can answer any question. Okay? And that's it for market dynamics.